My name is Catherine Chu, and I am one of the 2018 DCIC BD2K Summer Fellows. I am going to be presenting my project, Predicting the Predictability of Small Molecule Effects on Human Cells. So my project is about early stage drug discovery, and one of the challenges of early stage drug discovery is being able to identify small molecules with desired properties in a large chemical space of millions of potentially bioactive small molecules. The aim of this project is to find new ways to explore this chemical space. The desired effect of a small molecule can be inferred from the gene expression pattern it induces in human cells, but profiling the gene expression for every potential small molecule in different human cells is expensive and therefore not feasible. My project focused on using the L1000 LINKS dataset, which has the expression signatures for over 20,000 small molecules, and for predicting and prioritizing which small molecules are likely to display more predictable gene expression patterns when applied to human cells. The motivation for this project came from our observation from the L1000 fireworks display that some clusters of small molecule induced gene expression signatures share the same chemical scaffolds which you can see in this figure. In this picture, there are two prominent clusters and their corresponding chemical scaffold labeled. This visualization suggested that there might be a relationship between the chemical structure of a compound and its induced gene signature. The first step of my project was representing the drugs in the L1000 dataset computationally into fingerprints. The chemical features of any molecule can be represented as bits, as shown in the image on the top left. One way is using substructure. So, looking at the image on the right, there's a list of possible chemical features, and if that feature is present, the bit will be represented accordingly. Another way is using similarity, which can be seen in the image on the bottom left. In this method, paths in the molecule are determined, and these are then represented as bits. This is a list of all the chemical fingerprints I used. All these fingerprint methods are available through the RDKit Python package. There's also a summary of the number of bits in each fingerprint and the mechanism of how the small molecule chemical structure was converted into the bit vector. The approach we took for predicting the predictability of each small molecule is a two-step regression model. Before we get to the regression model, the first step was to combine all six fingerprint bit vectors into one data frame. In the process, there were a few different combination of fingerprints that were assessed, but using all six proved to have the best results. Using the fingerprints as attributes and the L1000 gene expression signatures as the target vectors to learn, we ran the Ridge algorithm with a leave one out cross validation. This allowed us to obtain a predicted gene expression pattern for each small molecule. This predicted vector of expression was compared to the ground truth by computing a correlation coefficient R squared. We then took the vector of R squareds for all small molecules, which was the predictability for each small molecule, and used that as a target vector to learn, and again with the fingerprints as attributes. This regression step was performed with a random forest algorithm, which predicts the predictability of each small molecule. And here are the results. The plot on the left has the predictability scores for the regression model that were between 0 and 1, with the highest R squared being 0.89. We compare this result to a dummy regression model, which can be seen on the right, with a maximum R squared of 0.37. When looking more closely at the data, we found that there were over 30 small molecules that had an R squared over 0.6. This suggested that there were some structural motifs in the data set that contribute to the predictability of gene signatures. These top 30 drugs were assessed, and these are the families of the most prominent motifs. On the left, there are four six-member rings, and many of these have the same mechanism of action of topoisomerase inhibitors. In the middle, there are three six-member rings and one five-member ring, and most of these molecules have a glucocorticoid receptor agonist as their mechanism of action. On the right, there are four rings with nitrogen and sulfur dispersed throughout them, and this family did not have a known mechanism of action, 
but many of them had the predicted mechanism of action of dopamine receptor antagonists. We also use the predictability scores to computationally predict the mechanism of action. In the violin plot on the left, the top three mechanisms of action are the same that were determined qualitatively, giving more support to that observation. We also use the predictability scores to predict the chemical scaffold, which you can see on the right. Finally, we recolored the L1000 fireworks display by the predictability of each compound for each signature. The noticeable clusters are circled, and the mechanism of actions of the small molecules in that cluster are labeled. Again, the mechanisms are very similar to those from the qualitative analysis and the violin plots. So, in conclusion, this work was able to demonstrate that there are structural features that are able to be represented as chemical fingerprints that are predictive of changes in gene expression. In fact, the structural motifs found in this work suggested that the most predictable structures have numerous ring structures. The model generated by this project can be applied to millions of small molecules to assess their predictability, which can be used to better prioritize small molecules for further analysis. I would like to thank Dr. Mayan and Ms. Jenkins for the wonderful opportunity to work on this project. In addition, thank you to Dr. Wang and Dr. Mayan for supervising me on this project. And finally, thank you to all the members of the Mayan Lab and the other summer fellows for such a great experience.